Hey everyone, Sean Frangella here with another new Cinema 4D video about five more of my top features of R17. So I've had some time to really dive into R17 and some of the new features and I wanted to put together another video of five more of my favorite features and go over some of the additional new tools. So let's dive into Cinema 4D R17 and take a look at some more new features. Number one, takes. The new takes system lets you store different versions of a 3D scene within the same project file by tracking changes made in the attribute window, as well as lets you render out different saved takes when you're ready for final rendering. As an example, if you're working on a dynamic simulation, you could save different simulations as different takes and then go with the one you like. Takes applies to everything in the attributes panel, so even if you completely change the look of a scene by editing lighting and materials, you can still store that within the same file as a new take. Then when you're done, you can render out the different takes all from within the same file in the render queue and add variables to file names with the new naming options in render settings. Whether you're looking for an easy way to try out different animations without having to create many different files or easily render out multiple versions of a project within the same file, the new take system will be a huge help to your workflow. And if you want to learn more about the all new take system, be sure to check out my full video on takes by clicking that thumbnail. Number two, motion tracking updates. Full motion tracking for compositing 3D scenes in the live action footage was introduced in Cinema 4D with R16, and now in R17 there have been additional improvements made to the camera tracker tool in order to help you better control and manipulate tracked footage. In the new graph view, you can get a quick view of all the track points in your scene and delete bad track points. You also can view the track points through a line graph view and set a threshold of quality points to use for scene reconstruction will to help with accuracy when you're rebuilding 3D scenes from live action footage. The updates to the camera tracker greatly improves motion tracking accuracy straight within Cinema 4D. And if you want to check out the new updates to the camera tracker tool in depth, you can take a look at my full R17 camera tracking tutorial by clicking on that thumbnail right there. Speaking of motion tracking updates, that brings us to number three, the lens distortion tool. The motion tracking tools released in R16 are great, but there could be some challenges if you're dealing with footage shot on a wide angle or fisheye lens and need to compensate for that in your 3D scene reconstruction. Now with the new lens distortion tool, you can by creating custom lens profiles easily pulled from wide angle footage and applying that to your 3D assets. You can do this in the camera tracker tool once you pull a profile or use it as a post effect while doing final rendering. If you want to learn more about the new lens distortion tool, be sure to check out the full video I put together on it by clicking that floating shiny thumbnail that just popped up right there. Number four, book generator. One really fun new feature is the fully customizable book generator. If you're doing renderings of home interiors and need to seed some bookshelves with random books and magazines, you can use this new tool to quickly add different types of books, magazines, and book holders to any plane in Cinema 4D. Using editable options, you can quickly randomize the look of the books as well as the materials. Whenever there are fully customizable assets and new versions of Cinema 4D, I always have a blast playing around with them and seeing what they can do. These customizable objects can be a little tricky to get set up at first, so if you want to see a full walkthrough on how to set up the new book generator, be sure to check out my step-by-step -step video on it by clicking that flashy thumbnail floating right in front of you. Number five, content browser. Besides the super fun book generator, as with all Cinema 4D releases, the content browser is packed with new content. This includes new materials, more 3D models, editable objects like the book and bookshelf generator, example project scenes, and more. So there are a ton of new features to Cinema 4D R17, so many that I had to make a second top five video to catch all of them. And if you want to check out more new R17 features, you can check out my other top five video that covers five totally different features and if you want to learn more about any of the new features I talked about in this video, you can check out a much more in-depth video on each of those features by clicking any of those thumbnails right there. And if you have any questions on any of the new updates or you want to let me know updates you want to see or your thoughts on the new updates, you can let me know on Twitter. I'm at Sean Frangella and you can hashtag those R17. And be sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel at youtube.com slash Sean Frangella to get weekly updates on new Cinema 4D and After Effects features, tutorials, and all sorts of good stuff for working in the visual effects and 3D industry. And if you want to help support the show, you can check out patreon.com slash Sean Frangello where you can get access to project files, bonus content, and more. As always, thanks for watching. I will see you at the next video. Do you like watching these tutorials and want to see more episodes more often? 
You can help keep the show going by lending your support on Patreon at patreon.com slash Sean Frangella. More importantly, if you want to throw in a couple extra bucks, you can get bonus content like project files used in the tutorials, answers to direct questions, live hangouts for questions, and even request specific tutorial topics for me to use for my next video. Also be sure to subscribe to the show by clicking the subscribe button or visiting the show homepage at youtube.com slash Sean Frangella. And if you're hip with social media and have a question about this tutorial, you can find me on Twitter at Sean Frangella. As always, thanks for watching and I will see you at the next video.